Had the Roman Emperor Julian the Apostate lived for more than 32 years, Christianity wouldn't exist today. Considered as the last pagan emperor of Rome, Julianus set out to eradicate the Christian faith from the face of the earth. Young, brilliant, and determined, Julian believed that the only way to live a good life was to follow Rome's old gods. Vengeful for his exile, embittered by the assassination of his father and rebellious towards Christian education, Julianus grew hungry for power. Upon his return to Rome in 355 AD, Julian led a massive crusade against the new religion. His indomitable will and beliefs brought Christianity dangerously close to the edge. Before he could push Christ's religion off a cliff, a mysterious spear ended his life. Welcome back to Uncharted History. Join us as we observe how Julian the Apostate almost wiped out Christianity in Europe. Before Emperor Constantine or Constantine the Great, Romans were polytheistic. They prayed to 12 Roman gods, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus, to name a few. For centuries, ordinary people and emperors alike worshipped the old gods and brought them sacrifices. But Constantine changed everything by renouncing polytheism. In 312 AD, Constantine the Great became a devout Christian after his encounter with the divine. During a vision on October 27th, Constantine, I foresaw an enormous flaming cross in the skies. Next to the cross were the words, By this, conquer, written in Greek. The emperor gazed at the vision until it disappeared. From that moment, Constantine adopted the cross as his imperial symbol and declared himself a Christian. The following day, during the Battle of the Milvian Bridge, his opponent, Maxentius, drowned in the river, making Constantine ruler of the Roman Empire, just like the vision foretold. The legend of Emperor Constantine converted the whole Roman Republic to Christianity. Both Constantine II and Constantius II followed in the footsteps of Constantine the Great until Julian the Apostate, or heretic, assumed the throne. Born in Constantinople in 331 AD, Flavius Claudius Julianus was part of the Emperor Constantine's extended family and a member of the imperial line. However, Julianus had a very traumatic childhood. His mother, Basiliana, died shortly after he was born in 337 AD. Constantius II executed Julius Constantius, Julian's father, as well as Constantius Gallus, Julian's stepbrother, clearing up Constantius' way to the throne. The little boy became an orphan at the age of six. To protect Julian, he was raised in Bithynia by his grandmother. There, close to the Bosphorus and the Black Sea, Julian studied Greek and was given a Christian education. He was technically exiled from Rome and its political intrigue. At the age of seven, Julian went to the guardianship of Christian Bishop Eusebius. Because of the guardian's overprotectiveness, Julian wanted nothing to do with his domineering tutor. His only solace in the world full of paranoia was Meridonus, the household slave and philosopher. Meridonius was the only friend Julian had at the time. Some records claim the boy saw him as a father figure. It wouldn't be the first time. From his tutor, Julian learned classical philosophy, logic, and reason. But alas, their friendship was not meant to be. At the age of 11, Julian went to Cappadocia, modern-day Turkey. Another bishop named George of Cappadocia took care of Julian until the age of 18, when the exile was lifted. Later, Julian traveled to Greece and studied philosophy. For the first time in his life, he abandoned his Christian education and focused on the ancient books of wisdom. In the meantime, he befriended Libanius, a leading pagan intellectual who was the central figure in Julian's early adulthood, one of the reasons for his conversion to paganism. Out of the blue, Constantius II sent word for Julianus in 355 AD. As Rome expanded, Constantius needed a person he could trust with the empire's administrative problems. Running out of family members, thanks to his assassination spree earlier, Julian was his only option. The 24-year-old cousin answered the call. He was appointed to high office and was no longer a political prisoner. In the year 355, Julian traveled to Mediolanum, modern-day Milan, Italy, to quote-unquote help the emperor. Despite being related by blood, Constantius was still the cousin who murdered his father and brother. In reality, Julian felt nothing but resentment and bitterness towards his emperor. By keeping his true feelings and pagan beliefs a secret, the unsuspecting emperor appointed Julian Caesar in Gaul. But before we peer into Julian's leadership days and his strategy to bring down Christendom, don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos about dark history. 
Gaul covered an area of around 500,000 square kilometers. It represented modern-day France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and parts of Germany. Being named Caesar in Gaul was a great honor for Julian. Despite his lack of military experience, Julian's exceptional leadership skills allowed him to stand out in the Roman Empire. Thanks to several brilliant victories in the region, the young Caesar garnered the respect of the people and the empire alike. While Julian was busy counting victories, Constantius was facing major threats. In Mesopotamia, the Sicilian emperor Shapur II invaded and conquered the city of Amida. Constantius wanted to send Julian, his best general, to the east. The army protested, knowing their general would get slaughtered against the much powerful Sansanids at the time. Rebellion broke out. Constantius proclaimed Julian a usurper, wanted to face him in battle. Unfortunately, the emperor never reached Julian's forces. He died on November 3rd, 361. Julian took the imperial diadem on December 11th, 361 AD. He was crowned emperor. He rejected Christianity. But his first act as leader of Rome was to attend Constantius's Christian burial. Julian's sole purpose for going to the funeral was to reveal his true faith to the entire realm. For an empire that spent the better half of a century adopting Christianity, this was an outrage. Still, the emperor continued restoring and rebuilding the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. His goal wasn't to pay respects to Judaism. Julian wanted to mock Jesus Christ's prediction about the destruction of the temple in AD 70. By rebuilding it, he would prove Christ, the prophet, was wrong. Realizing that Christians desired temples they could pray in, Julian decided to build one himself. For the temple's foundation, instead of starting with bricks, he used a new belief system. Julian ordered Celastius, his philosopher friend, to create a catechism for his new church. The document married philosophy and religion, which resembled a form of Neoplatonism. The new temple was supposed to be a serious competitor to Christianity, but it was flawed. One thing Julian failed to anticipate was the beliefs of his people. He was building a temple no one would visit. The old gods were dying. Not wanting to undermine the people's faith, Julian adopted a new strategy. Emperor Julian waged an intellectual war against Christianity. He would use his skills of persuasion to guide people's religious beliefs instead of punishing them. First, he stirred up competition between the different sects of Christianity. Second, Julian attacked Christianity in his writings. His classical education armed with strong debating skills. So this was an easy task. In his short sketch, Caesars, Julian challenged the Christian concept of forgiveness. He argued that Christianity attracted people who believed they could get away with any sin as long as they repent. In Against the Galileans, he attacked Christian beliefs, dismissing them as superstitious and unrealistic. His third phase included the banishment of Christianity from high office. Even teachers had to adopt paganism as their new religion. For someone who had been reprimanded by Christian teachers his entire life, this was an unmistakable victory. However, while Emperor Julian was forcing schoolchildren to read classical texts from Homer and tales of Odysseus, the public saw him as a fool. With his deeply unfashionable beard, Julianus attempted to emulate Marcus Aurelius, but became the laughingstock of the empire. They were insulted that their emperor was mocking Christianity. And what was their alternative? Another ancient, pagan, and nearly extinct religion. This new brand of philosophy only helped to alienate the already angry population. They didn't want to replace their, at the time, progressive beliefs with some made-up philosophical scriptures. As dissatisfaction grew, Julian's power waned. The final nail in the coffin was struck when Julian dug up the holy bones of a Christian martyr in a nearby temple. Riots broke out, and the temple Julian was trying to build was burnt down. The emperor was forced to close the main cathedral, and the chaos innocent people lost their lives. Julian was devastated. Despite his hatred for Christianity, Julian loved his people. He had to find another way to convince the Romans to renounce Christianity once and for all. Just as he was about to come up with a new strategy, war was brewing in the east. In 363 AD, Julian received a message from an oracle. It said that emperors should launch a campaign against the Sassanid Empire, modern-day Iran. Some historians claim that Julianus wanted to exact revenge on the Persians, and his desire for glory cast the deciding vote. On March 5, 363 AD, Julian headed towards the Euphrates to conquer Ctesiphon. With his army of 90,000 strong, they marched into the Sassanid territory and devoured cities in their path. Emboldened by their victories, the army marched on Ctesiphon. 
After an unsuccessful siege of the city, Julian's army, defeated and demotivated, was forced to retreat. On June 23, 363, at the Battle of Samara near Maranga, an arrow speared Julian's stomach, piercing through his liver and intestines. Usually, an injury like this would not be fatal, but Julian's wound was different. After three days of careful treatment by his doctor, Julian suffered a major hemorrhage and began losing consciousness. His last words were said to be, Physisti Galilei, meaning, You have won, Galilean, referring to Jesus Christ of Galilee. Julian the Apostate died on June 26, 361 AD, the age of 32, and with him, the hope of reinstating paganism in Rome. Today, some historians think that Julian had the power to eradicate Christianity from Rome. Others believe that the new religion was deeply embedded in Roman society and incorruptible, even by a brilliant and dedicated emperor. In either case, Julian the Apostate will never be remembered as a devout Christian, just as he intended. This is Uncharted History. See you in our next video.